You're listening to theoutdoorstation.co.uk. Hello and welcome to another podcast from the Outdoors Station, where you hear me breaking up bits of dried pasta, uh, pasta sauce, ready for the OMM Mountain Marathon, which is in a couple of days' time. Um, The weather forecast isn't good, (laughs) to say the least. Um, It looks like the the, the worst weather I've I've done one in myself. and uh, the experts seem to be uh, braving, braving it out and saying, oh, it's just a bit of rain and water uh, and, uh, and wind. But I think there's going to be a considerably more than that. Uh, so um, what we've done is uh, we've gone over and over the gear, review as you do, any sort of trip, and uh, decided that um, we want to make sure we're prudence is a better part of valour and that we've got the appropriate plastic bags and uh, containers, as it were, to keep us um, keep us uh, dry or keep our gear dry in, in the tent, because the tent is a single skin tent, um, and although the ground sheet is sewn in, there are gaps all around the outside of the ground sheet to what could be what could be a quagmire when we come to to camp. Um, so um, little things like luxuries of food and treats to make the evening uh, more pleasant. Uh, and uh, keep your spirits up is, is an important thing. Uh, this pasta sauce is incredible because it's um, just done a sort of a thick, juicy tomato sauce. Um, and the pasta, I've cooked a, a pile of um, spaghetti. I've chopped up spaghetti, some brown spaghetti. Um, and um, that crunches down to, to next to nothing. It's, uh, it's a great uh, moral boost. Uh, and we all like our food when we're doing various activities. What has been noticeable is um, is looking on the OMM forum um, the uh, the differences between some of the experts, elite people, and the uh, deprivations they're prepared to accept, and and those who like to do it but but do it with a feeling of um, uh, safety or a little bit of margins that just um, make you feel comfortable. Some people are prepared to sacrifice quite a lot. Others, not so much. And we're somewhere in between the two, to be honest. Um, there are people there who are doing it with all the kit lists, bearing in mind you have to take a tent, a uh, sleeping bag, uh, waterproof clothing with, um, with uh, seam-sealed clothing, um, uh, food for 48 hours, cooking gear, um, and appropriate safety equipment, first aid kit and so on. There are people there with rucksacks that they say are between 2 and 3K. Um, which I find just incredible. However, you know, they, uh, they reply quite um, comprehensively on the forum and explain what they're prepared to accept. Um, whereas uh, Rose and I have decided that, although we could limit ourselves, so basically these guys don't have any spare dry clothes. They, they, they run and sleep in, um, in, their, in their gear that they, they, they start off in. Um, they might have a, a down jacket or something, um, they don't have a survival bag. They have a um, uh, a space blanket. It's obviously say a bulk. They don't sleep on anything particularly um, comfortable. They just sleep on perhaps some insulation padding or um, a, a cut down piece of foam. Um, all of which saves a massive amount of weight. There's certainly no luxuries like shaving kit or washing kit or anything like that. Um, they um, uh, it's just, it's quite an interesting exercise, and I certainly hope to. To, if I can, um, if weather permitting and also um, uh, moral spirit permitting, um, chat to uh, various people um, at the overnight camp and see exactly what they're carrying and how they've approached the um, the event itself. Um, so um, this, uh, because we start at uh, about nine forty and we've got five hours for the first day. Of course, we're going to be finished around three o'clock, so um, we've got to carry uh, two meals for the for the first uh, Saturday. So we sort of have a, a late meal when we get in, and then an evening meal, uh, and then we've got um, breakfast, which is a sort of a porridgey thing. Uh, but we've dried a whole variety of uh, fruits and little luxuries that uh, give a bit of zing to the taste and give you a bit of a moral boost to add to our uh, our porridge in the morning. 
Um, so I, I think on that score we'll be fine. Um, the the weather forecast isn't isn't good. We are assuming that it's going to be um, very very wet underfoot, so quagmire type conditions. Um, and uh, we've we've worked walked and run in those sort of conditions before. It's not pleasant, but you know you soon dry off. Um, one of the most important things for us probably is a, a small towel. We're taking a cut down version of the of the micro towel, the MSR thing. Um, which it will allow us to get in the tent, dry ourselves off, um, uh, taking a J-cloth to wipe the inside of the ground sheet or, or tent if it gets wet, if it is that deep. Um, and then all the sleeping gear will go inside a um, survival zone, which is waterproof. And we're taking a large plastic bag or a large um, nylon bag to put the rucksack and any contents in there. So that'll be kept out of the water as well. So, you know, we are expecting sort of pretty wet conditions. Um, from my experience of, of the overnight camp, um, they've used in the past, uh, they've obviously had permission from a farmer and used several fields, um, which was surrounded by streams. And actually that wasn't too bad, but it was the main thoroughfares turned into a quagmire pretty quick. Um, and uh, the other one was um, in the middle of nowhere on the edge of the moorland, but um, there was a road running nearby, uh, which helped for obviously getting in port loos and, and that sort of thing. Um, the, uh, the 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 uh, type of dress for the evening for the quagmire is obviously you don't take a change of shoes or anything. You use the same shoes. Uh, you might put some um, dry socks on, or perhaps that's a luxury even. Uh, but to save your feet getting colder and wetter, uh, everybody puts their feet into a, into a plastic bag and then into the shoes. So it's um, a very cheap uh, seal skins, I suppose. Um, so I just thought I would uh, do a quick uh, couple of minutes here. Um, check the weather forecast in a second. Keep your one eye on it continually. Um, be looking at the forum, um, be reviewing our gear uh, a bit later on, uh, probably tonight um, for the final time. We've changed things several times over. Um, still uh, managing to keep it uh, nice and compact and inside the, the 24 litre bag, uh, which obviously keeps the weight down, which is very nice. And I'm looking to fill any nooks and crannies that I can find in the bags with um, luxury, little, little luxury items, uh, the occasional um, chocolate or, or bar or something to, to lift the spirits. Um, but otherwise, um, we're, we're fairly close to being ready to go. It's just uh, like everybody, one eye on the weather, um, hoping that we don't get back to the car and the car's sunk into the mud, because uh, no doubt that's parking on somebody's field somewhere, uh, and um, that we can get there and back safely. But anyway, we'll, we'll touch base later on, and um, we'll go and check the, uh, check the weather report. Uh, there's a big shower on the way, uh, and uh, Phil Avery will have news of that when he's uh, ready. A very good morning to you. Ah, are you ready for it? Now, overnight, eventually, many of those showers will just ease away for a time across the northern half of Scotland. The sky is clear further to the south. Uh, and notice this. This is a more organised band of cloud, wind and rain piling in to the northwestern quarter of the British Isles, very much on a par with what we saw through Thursday. Temperatures further south, well back into single figures. Now, that area of cloud and rain that we saw up in the northwest, we're keeping a close eye on that because, as I say, it was very windy, very wet through Thursday, and here comes almost a replica event with up to a couple of inches of rain falling into western Scotland, the northwest of England, northwest of Wales, and winds again pushing towards 60, if not 70 miles an hour in some locations. But notice, it's not all doom and gloom. That rain will take a time before it gets away down into this southeastern quarter, probably not arriving until overnight. Falling on behind, brighter skies, thankfully, and the winds showing signs of easing. But a significant factor is that the winds begin to turn around towards the north. And that is the general trend into the first part of next week. Things turning much, much colder across all parts of the British Isles. More details, as ever, online. I'll see you later. <laughs> So as uh, time moves on, it's now um, Thursday evening and uh, we have packed and repacked our bags and managed to get it down to our, our Go Light VO24s, um, which we uh, have said from the very beginning we'd prefer to get into if we could. Um, one thing is uh, 
very true if you have space you do fill it um with all sorts of luxuries and things and, and up goes the weight um so uh, we've just gone through the exercise and uh, and weighed them uh rose's pack is uh, about four and a half uh, and mine is uh, just under six and a half which i think is reasonable for the type of people we are and the way we're approaching the race um, Rose is just unpacking her bag again just so she can go through the list of the of the items uh, with us. I thought it would be worthwhile just uh, going through it, explain to people um, how we're approaching it and what is behind the choice of the items that we've decided to take with us. Um, I've had a look on the uh, OMM forum where there's been a, a little bit of chit-chat, predominantly about the weather, uh, which is still looking pretty iffy. Um, but um, there there are good signs, although there's also... Uh, news reports that certain roads are flooded, so actually getting to it, as somebody said, is going to be uh, a major achievement, achievement uh, even before we start the event. So uh, I'd say as, as, as people go, although we're, we're uh, definitely on the lightweight variety when we look at uh, backpacking, hiking and travelling generally, uh, which has enabled us over the last few years to, to cut down, we're not on the uber light stage. So although we could actually go lighter um, by going any lighter than we're actually going at the moment, we've uh, decided actually it would be uh, less pleasurable. Uh, we do like to uh, enjoy a reasonable night's sleep. We don't like to be too cold. Um, we like to be relatively dry. Um, and uh, and we like to have some food to eat, as as Rose has just chipped in there. So I'm just going to wait for her to unpack her bags and then and then quickly go through um, what we've uh, what we've done and how we've broken it down. Um, the, uh, the 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 rucksacks are are small. Certainly, they they seem um, very small compared to something like the actual OMM 25 litre pack, um, which um, uh, we we do like the OMM products. It's just unfortunately I've got a long back size and Rose has got a short back size, uh, and and uh, sadly, the, the rucksacks are a fixed length, which um, doesn't quite suit us uh, for the amount of training that we've been doing and, of course, how super foot we are. I'll tell you one thing I have, uh, have realised, which came as a bit of a shock, really, is that uh, when I, I weighed my bag at uh, 6.5k and I looked at it and, and did a bit of a calculation, I realised that that's equivalent to a stone. And um, I uh, will admit to being, or have been, about two stone overweight. And when I'm holding a rucksack up like that, I'm thinking, I'm carrying twice this amount with me for no good reason at all. So um, the actual training of the event has enabled me to lose uh, a bit of weight. And hopefully uh, the actual completing the event will enable me to, <laughs> to lose the rest. Um, so uh, I thought uh, we would go through um, through our kit list, um, uh, perhaps helping people who are looking at this, uh, doing this event in the future or considering something like this uh, and give you some reasons why we've chosen what we've chosen. Um, starting with Rose, her her pack is actually physically smaller than than mine. I think it's probably more a twenty two, whereas mine's a twenty six. Uh, so consequently, um, I've got a um, a very uh, old uh, blacks down sleeping bag which fits her pack. So that's crunched right down and put into there. And she's having my um, marmot helium bag, uh, which is a warmer bag because uh, Rose, like most women. Uh, gets cold very very quickly and I, I'd prefer to, her to have the better bag uh, and keep warm so I'm carrying the bigger bag just because of the bulk but the the bags aside um, what else have you chosen Rose and, and uh, why have you chosen what you've chosen? Ah well um, well going on from I suppose the sleeping I've got a silk, a silk um, sleep lining sheet um, that adds some extra warmth which is brilliant and um, got the torso light um, which is a, a bit of comfort um, but obviously a lot smaller than the pro light, which we'd perhaps use normally. Um, going on from there, once we've got sleeping... Well, we've um, also got the survival zone bivy bag as well, oh, yeah. Yeah. which partly is for emergency purposes, but also um, the tent that uh, we'll explain, uh, as people probably picked up already, is a single skin. So if it is damp inside the tent, or it is very, very wet when we actually camp, and it is a bit of a quagmire, um, then if water does get into the... Um, uh, onto the ground sheet or, or whatever, at least uh, everything will be relatively dry inside um, the uh, survival zone, which of course adds more insulation as well. So again, back to that comfort level. And we've wrapped, um, or I'm actually stashing the um, thermorest and the uh, um, survival, zone. survival zone in um, an old uh, sleeping bag, uh, sleeping bag, um, pack liner. 
just to keep it uh, the wet out of it and that's going to be rolled up on a tube on the outside of my pack because it's actually longer than my pack um, because the pack is quite small. So why have you you got a pack liner, an old pack liner there? Well the pack liner really is is when we're in the tent if, if we do get a, a lot of wet water in and rain in um, as we've been led to believe actually possibly it's going to be very wet indeed we can stash everything that we've got loose in the tent um, the, the packs and whatever inside it and they're going to be secure and, and watertight so really you know, a worst case scenario if it were to be torrential and the tent for some reason um, water come through the uh, under, underneath the side of the tent and uh, as I say this the um, ground sheet is, is stitched in in various places around the frame of the tent uh, then at least uh, we hopefully will remain on all the important things will remain dry during the night yeah absolutely so uh, moving on from the sort of sleeping system then um clothes that's there's a good one really because it's uh, you know you you've you've really agonized over these clothes yeah it's, it's taken a while to to really um, sort of mi minimize what we're taking so um sort of looking in my bag i've got um, um uh, a pair of tights <laughs> Um, just a thick denier tight, um, which I'm going to put on as my dry layer with some um, Montaigne Featherlight pants as well, uh, which are remarkably effective. Um, so they're like a, a dry layer. Um, and to go with that, I've got a silk body, um, long sleeved, which again, I'll, I'll have as my dry dry layer and, and sleep in. Um, another pair of socks, two pairs of socks. A lot of people don't bother, but uh, I'm two pair of socks girl <laughs> and uh, a spare pair of knickers as well. Um, also sports bra, which I'll just use this, the same one for the two days. Not that economical. So so you're actually going to be running uh, or travelling uh, for the event dressed in what? Uh, for the actual event, I've got some um, uh, running tights, full length running tights. And I'm going to probably wear my long sleeve bionic tee. Um, and then depending on the weather, either... A wind shirt, um, a light speed jacket, or my superfly jacket, waterproof. Depend so depending on how wet it is. And uh, what's the uh, what's the process that you go through? Uh, I'm just sort of asking you to explain it really when we when we stop and get to the to the end. Oh, uh, when we got to the tent. All right. Well, we we've sort of got into our own routine. Um, I tend to as soon as I stop, you know, even training. As soon as I've stopped moving uh, I tend to start getting cold very quickly um, I'm fine if I keep warm so we have a procedure we throw up the tent um, I tend to, to get in take off anything wet and rub myself down and then climb into my wonderful um, down jacket which I won't go anywhere with that these days um, and if it's really cold I'll actually climb in the sleeping bag as well um, by which time Bob's usually got a brew on because he's a nice husband <laughs> and uh, that um that warms us up. We usually have a, a cup of soup or a, a tea ready, um, and that makes a big difference. But it usually takes about an hour, doesn't it, for for you to sort of come round and get your body back up to sort of a comfortable temperature? Well, I suppose it depends how how much energy we've expended and how hard. I mean, if there's a lots of rain and wind and it's been really tough, then you know it just takes a while, I suppose, to get back to to being. I mean, we usually um, flake out for a bit anyway, don't we? So. Um, well, certainly, so it, 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 it can be a very uh, exerting uh, few hours, uh, and how people uh, manage to do the, the uh, elites, I really don't know, uh, but they're phenomenal um, athletes uh, carrying very, very little and driving themselves very hard on, on nothing more than a packet of crisps sometimes, the way they, yeah. <laughs> some of the comments they've made on the website. It's quite interesting too, I mean, you know, d just trying to get fit enough for this event and someone was saying, well, are you ready to do it? And I said, well, no, I don't think you ever really get as fit as you want because you're, tr you're working and doing all the mm. things you have to do, so you have to fit it around. I mean, really, to, I think the only time I'd feel really prepared and fit enough to do it was if I spent my whole time trying to get fit, you know, and I spent... You know, I could cross, cross, try, have the time to cycle th two or three hours a couple of times a week and run long runs and do weekends and, you know, really train properly. But as it is, you sort of cram it around life, don't you? Yeah, so. well, absolutely. I mean, we've managed, what, a couple of hour runs a week. And um, you've probably done more than me, actually, at the weekends, done, done long, longer runs on the hills. We've yeah. tried to manage two or three hour runs on the hills, but it's been hard work squeezing it in. Yeah, it's definitely hard, you know, and, and you know, I'd swim once a week and do a few other classes and that sort of thing as well. But but to fit it all in, as, as I say, it's, uh, yeah. 
but it, we'll, we'll give it a best shot. We don't expect to to win something like this. It's more uh, it's more the fun and challenge of taking part and <laughs> coming out alive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, so that's the sort of the clothing side. Um, but oh, you've I've also got some got... waterproof trousers as well. Some go light um, waterproof trousers because that's part of the regulations. And you're and you're obviously um, running in uh, in Ooh, is it innovate shoes. Yeah, I got some two eight twos which are. Uh, the Innovate, so they're really good, a female specific for sort of adventure racing, trail running. And have you found those so far? They'll be, they're really good actually, really nice, I really like them. And you've got the gators as well of course to go with them? Oh yes, some Innovate gators as well, keep all the rubbish out. Well if we're going to be wading through um, ankle deep, um, damp, um, damp, obviously wet, muddy ground, um, certainly the uh, the gators are vital to stop the crud getting into your, to your shoes and just um, making you stop and start all the time. Um, you're carrying the first aid kit, which is going to be fairly basic. Yeah. I think um, we've just got a few plasters in there, there um, some antiseptic wipes, um, uh, a bandage, pain and pain <laughs> painkillers, as if we'd need those. Uh, and on the food front, you're carrying sort of your share of the food, yeah. um, which is sort of three packets of um, pack and go meals, uh, one which is a breakfast, uh, one pudding, and one main meal. Um, I've got the same as well, and um, what we're going to do is, uh, as you heard me earlier on, we've we've also made a big pasta meal and dried that. So we've we've got a separate packet of pasta sauce and a separate packet of broken up, cooked then dried spaghetti, um, and um, the first meal will be the packet meals, and then the second meal uh, in the evening uh, will be the pasta meal when we use the same packet bags again. Uh, and put all the um, the dried food in there and reconstitute it uh, because we've made uh, little pot cosies. Cozy so uh, there's cosy bags that actually the packet food sit in uh, and um, it's going to be nice for a change to get to the bottom of the packet food and it still be nice Ooh, and hot. Yeah, definitely. It'd be really good. Um, on the brew front, uh, you've got a, a little titanium mug um, and we've got a rehydration drink, um, which we will have during the day. Um, again, we could skimp on the mugs and so on. We have got one cook pot for brewing the water for the um, for the foods uh, and also uh, for the drinks. Uh, and then we've got a, a mug each. Uh, I suppose we could cut back a bit on that somehow and, and share the big pot. But um, again, little luxuries. Um, the only Some tea and hot chocolate. And well, that's, yes, I was sort of carrying those things. So I was going to come on to, to my uh, uh, contents in a second. The only other thing is um, you're carrying a little bit of spare fuel just in case we need it. A yeah. uh, bit of meth, very small bottle of meth, 100 mil bottle. Um, spare uh, reservoir platypus. Which um, hopefully we will uh, filter all the water, which we've been advised to do um, uh, if possible into the platypus. Uh, when we uh, or during the event and and uh, at the end where we have wherever we camp uh, uh, through the aqua gear which I'll be carrying and you've got a head torch and I think yeah. that is apart from the so walking that, poles that's about it yeah you said that didn't you yeah. um, and the walking, walking poles? poles yeah walking poles and then it's um, I've got some tissues and lip sol oh wash kit little wash kit just um tiny um bag with uh, a brush <laughs> a brush and um some wet ones. Um, that's it, I think. Toothbrush. Yeah, with the toothbrush, um, it's, uh, it's just a very short-handled toothbrush. And what we're going to do is uh, put the toothpaste on the toothbrush and wrap it in cling film. Um, I know it sounds uh, certainly the thing that the elite people would ditch, uh, but it um, gives you that bit of refreshed feeling. <laughs> yes, a bit of a civilization a in the, along in the with middle the, of nowhere. Along with a cup of tea in yeah. the morning. Uh, so that's pretty well crammed into Rose's pack. Now, coming over to my pile... Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty much identical, um, uh, apart from a few. More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apart from I've got the bricks. Um, so uh, wearing, uh, I, I'm. If it's as cold and wet as it looks like it will be, and I'll make the decision on the day. I've got the new Paramo uh, lightweight valise, which I'm um, looking forward to, to trialling. Um, of course, I haven't actually tried it out in the rain yet, so if it's a bit of a letdown, that'll be a bit of a disappointment. Um, so um, that's uh, that, that's quite good. If that um, if it looks like it's going to be warm for the two days, uh, I'll probably take my Superfly jacket and a wind shirt. Um, but if it's going to be cold, then the the Paramo wins. Uh, we'll see how we get on with that. Um, my down uh, smock, as always, is the Clatamoose and Live. 
um, which is a great piece of kit, very, very small and compact and, and works a treat for me. Um, my spare clothes, very much like Rose, I've, I've got, um, apart from the tights, I don't have a pair of tights. <laughs> or a sports but, bra. <laughs> or a sports bra. But I do have a, a silk um, silk body uh, top and a pair of uh, uh, Montane wind trousers. And now I'm using the new Montane uh, trail tights, which I've been running in for the last um, well few months, really, in, in training, which have been uh, very, very good. Um, they're like a, like a very tight pair of Ron Hills, uh, but with a mixture of fabrics in there. Uh, also um, tension and so on stitched in the right places to give you sort of muscle relief at the back of your knees and so on um, which actually has worked out really really well so if I finish and they're sopping wet and they're not going to dry I'll take them off and put the wind trousers on but if they're only damp I will put the wind trousers on and hopefully dry them with my body heat um, for the following day um, obviously the waterproof trousers we've touched on that oh you yeah, um, very sexy in them as well <laughs> oh yes, I've, I've you did get a comment at running club, didn't you? I've got the legs for this sort of thing. <laughs> Shame about the rest of it hanging over the top. Um, oh, of course, we've got the um, obligatory oh, yeah, pair of plastic bags as well. You've got to take a pair of plastic bags um, to put on your feet to act as uh, waterproof socks after you've um, when you're sort of trawling around going to the loo and stuff at night. Uh, I did, did think we should have gone to Waitrose actually and got some sort of class. Oh, Marcy, well, yes. yes, yes. Well, I'm disappointed but, but, that we've yeah, got no, some blue and white striped market bags. <laughs> Oh, thank you, dear. I thought you could have gone to some BHS or somewhere. Um, so a little titanium pot. Um, that is the, I think it's the 900ml pot. Uh, and for the, the cooker, we're actually using the triad stove. Um, I've done various calculations with the triad, the white box, the decagon, and um, the triad, although it's slower, is actually much more fuel efficient. So we're going that way. And I'm carrying 250ml of, uh, of meths. Um, and I've made a reflector and a heat reflector for the for the base of it, so it really does maximise the amount of heat. And the last time I tried it um, with this pot full of liquid, so it had at least 700, 800 ml of liquid in there, it uh, got it boiling in about 10 minutes and kept it boiling for well over 10 minutes. Uh, so um, plenty of power there, so we've just got to control that. Um, yeah, the same sort of three packets of food, um, a few cup of soups. We tend to find that when we stop the f cup of soups, the nicest, um, the nicest thing um, to just start start us off. Obviously, the pegs. I've got the complete tent as well, which is all um, a one piece affair, and that's going to be held up with the um, with the new uh, trailblazer um, walking poles from uh, from Mountain King, which will be giving a blast, uh, and they're also the tent poles. Um, same th arrangement again on the outside of the rucksack there is a, a big um, old uh, liner that we've got rucksack liner which has got the sleeping um, torso light pad and the um, bivy bag. bag survival zone in there uh, and on the glove front I've got uh, some uh, stickies and also some over mitts as well um, and I shall be juggling between those depending on the um, on the actual day um, again, another um, platypus. So we we know that we need two liters of water for the evening, uh, for uh, drinking as well as uh, as cooking, uh, and then just odd things like I've got a reel of uh, small amount of gaff tape, always good for repairing things in emergency. Um, a light stick, one of those um, crack and illuminated light sticks to ta attach to the tent to try and find it again during the night because uh, when the uh, the campsite or the camping area set up, you must have a best part of a thousand tents, um, and it's uh, quite hard to uh, sometimes remember where you left yours. Your trouble is everybody else puts the light sticks out as well. It makes for, makes for pretty. And I've got uh, some foot cream, Gurwell foot cream, um, a towel, and the toothbrush thing as well that we said earlier on. Uh, and so I just want to dry myself off, get the, um, the, uh, the, the, the remove the damp sweat, uh, and uh, get into the sleeping bag and, and get warm and then once we, uh, we've we got warm we can uh, socialise in the evening. And on top of that we have a camera and we have a recording equipment that I'm uh, using at the moment. I have um, an extension lead and a microphone that I can strat strap to the chest brace which I tested the other day which seems to work well. Um, and that is about it. Of course... Take your oh buff. yes, oh, you've got to take your buff, haven't you? And the hats, yeah, the yeah. We've got to, we've got to, a uh, range of hats, as as is usual with Bob, you know. Um, we're just keeping with uh, the a cap primarily, uh, which keeps the material away from your face when you've got a horizontal wind. Uh, there's nothing worse than trying to navigate or move and having the material blow across your face. 
So uh, that pretty well wraps up our um, our selection of uh, of gear before we go. Um, we're taking a just in case bag as well. Um, we're staying over on the way up, uh, and uh, we'll arrive um, a couple of hours or so before we need to go, uh, as it were, to uh, to get on the hill. So we will make the final assessment if we need to change any final things on the equipment uh, before we start then. But I think. I think, apart from a few luxury items like a few bars of chocolate and... We definitely need some bars and bits and pieces and stuff in any corners, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, apart from that, I think we're in. Um, oh, of course, head torches. We've got a couple of head yeah, torches. Okay. Um, I've got the uh, the e-light. And, of course, uh, the, you need a compass and a pencil. Pencil I haven't put into the mags yeah. for the rules. Um, so I've got a, a sighting compass, which is fantastic. Um, and... Uh, that should hopefully get us round. So um, that's the sort of gear situation. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, I'm sort of uh, really looking forward to it and dreading it at the same time. So, uh, I, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good Sunday night. <laughs> yes, yes, we eventually get back and open that first bottle of wine, I think. Um, yes, um, it's uh, apprehensive on the weather. It's um, it's not been as uh, dramatic as this the few times that we've, uh, we've done it before. So um, it should be uh, interesting to see how we all get on. Indeed. So final preparations have been made and we've kept uh, one very close eye on the on the weather report. Um, I noticed we've had some uh, emails in from OMM Control uh, telling us that the actual road uh, from Kendall to Borrowdale has actually been flooded, uh, but they hope it to be clear this morning. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's not giving the best picture, is it? Uh, weather forecast, at, uh, as you probably heard, looks a little bit wet on um, on Saturday and uh, windy, but hopefully cheering up Sunday. So I think it's going to be an adventure for us all uh, and um, uh, a challenge for um, skill, knowledge, equipment and enthusiasm. Uh, I think it should make for some interesting podcast if I can uh, manage to record it without everything getting soaking wet. To give you an idea of the sort of numbers involved, um, the actual event, uh, I've just done a quick tally, uh, across all the different categories, uh, amounts to almost 1,600 teams of two people. So that's 3,200 3, people uh, that will be hitting the um, that area and bomb-bursting in doing all the different courses, which I hope we can explain a bit later on. Uh, and as you can imagine, if they all camp in one spot, that's, uh, as I say, well over a 1,000 tents. Um, so it does tend to dominate an area, but sometimes they split the camping spots. So uh, wish us luck. Uh, hopefully it'll make for uh, some entertaining uh, entertaining content uh, and certainly some very um, uh, content full of atmosphere. Um, and hopefully we won't be too miserable and wet and soggy uh, for the next uh, 48 hours. But uh, we'll certainly record pieces as we go through, um, as per normal. And um, hopefully uh, if you can, you can spare us a, a minute or two, drop us some feedback and, and let us know if it was uh, entertaining for you as it was pleasurable for us. Okay, wish us luck. We're off. This independent programme has been brought to you by the Outdoors Station.co.uk.